All right, now we go on to question number 10. They say to us in a survey, 1,530 skydivers were asked if they had broken a limb. The results of the survey uh, were as follows, right? So there they give us a contingency table, right? They say calculate the values of A, B, C, and D. Now, uh, quite uh, easy to do this because it means 463 plus A should give us 913. So we can just sub uh, subtract these two from each other. So A would be 913 minus 463. So that means that A is 450. Okay, and let's see, uh, what about B? So B, we know if we add those two together, they should give us that total. So for B, we're going to say 782 minus the 463. Okay, so 782 minus 463. And that should give us 319. Okay, and let's go for the next one. All right, for C, we've got 319. Okay, uh, plus C should give us 617. So we're going to say 617 minus 319. And this gives us 298. And finally, for D, uh, we can say 1530 minus 782. And that gives us 748. All right. So that is truly how this cookie crumbles. All right, so quite easy to do contingency diagrams. Okay, they say calculate the probability uh, of choosing at random in the survey a female skydiver who has no who has not broken a limb. Right, so female skydiver, right, who has not broken a limb. So the two intersect right here at C. So females that have not broken a limb, 298. Okay, so that means that the probability will be 298, but this is divided by the total um, number of people. That's 1530. So you can just simply put that in your calculator. Okay, and the probability is... 0 0.19 okay right so let's go on to the next one they say determine whether the events of being female and having broken a limb are independent okay so remember for independent events so i'm gonna look at being female and breaking a limb having a broken limb so the probability of being female and a broken limb, okay? Right, so firstly, let's look at that one. So females that have broken a limb, okay? So we said females that have broken a limb, that's 450 over 1530. Okay. So we're looking for that independently, right? 450 divided by 1530. And that gives us 0 0.29. Okay. Right. But now let's compare it with the probability of finding a female right multiplied by the uh, probability of finding someone with a broken limb right so how many females in total were there so the total number of females it's 
is 748. So that's 748 over 1530 multiplied by uh, the probability of having someone with a broken limb. Right. So in this case, how many of them had a broken limb? That's 913 people. Right. So this is 913 over 1530. Now, if those two are equal, and if those two probabilities are equal, then we know that uh, the events are actually independent, right? So 748 over 1530, and this is multiplied by 913 over 1530. All right, and guess what? I find 0 0.29. So therefore, what does that mean to us? It means that um, the events are definitely independent. So therefore, being female and uh, having a broken limb, are independent why is that because the probability of being female having a broken limb is equal to the probability of being female multiplied by the probability of having a broken limb right and ladies and gents that is truly how you are going to answer that question right i hope that makes sense to you Right, and then we get to 10.2. Okay, let's see if we'll have enough space. Actually, uh, we can just remove this. I'm sure you would have already written it down or seen it, okay, and thought about it. Okay, so let's quickly have a look at the next question. So they say to us, give the word, uh, given the word rather, hammerhead, how many unique 10 letter words can be formed using the letters in the above uh, in the word above right so we know in this case we're looking for a 10 letter word okay uh, that simply means that repetition is certainly most certainly allowed okay so you can arrange this in as many ways as you possibly want so that would be in 10 factorial ways okay so i want you to think about that so that means in the first one you can choose from 10 from 9 from 8 and so that would be 10 factorial right so then 10.2.2 right they say find the probability of 10 letter words formed right such that the letter r and d are next to each other now, I want us to really think about this. So we've got 10 letters, right? Okay, so that's 1, 2, 3, that's 4, that's 5, that's 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Right, so these are all the spaces, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Right, now, we want D and R uh, to be together, right? So there's R, there's D, okay? So let's take D and R as though they were just one thing, okay? So that's D and R. Now... I want us to also keep in mind, we'll come back to the DNR, okay? Because you can write it in two different ways. Uh, you can start with R then D or the uh, D then R, okay? So on their own, already we know that they will give us two factorial uh, ways, right? But in this case, now that uh, we've got this combination of D and R that have occupied one space, right so how many more spaces are still left okay 
So that means that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So now that uh, we've chosen there, right? So that means that we've got eight factorial ways in which we can also, um, um, uh, in fact, eight factorial for the other letters. However, remember that in this case, we know that we can place DNR at any of these, right? So that means if I take this as DNR, okay, as one thing, so I've got actually nine cells. So I can choose nine here, that is inclusive of the DNR, right? And then I can choose eight, I can choose seven, I can choose six, uh, five, four, three, two, and one. So that's nine factorial actually, including D and R. Okay. But we also know that uh, they also can be arranged in two factorial ways. Right. And so how can we, uh, what would be our probability? So the probability, remember, we are not just looking for the number of possibilities. We're looking for a probability. So we're going to say 2 factorial times 9 factorial divided by the total number of possibilities. That's 10 factorial, right? So uh, that's going to be uh, 2 factorial multiplied by 9 factorial divided by 10 factorial okay and my probability there is 0 0.2 ladies and gents that is really how the cookie crumbles i hope that you enjoyed this question paper um i really enjoyed uh, walking you through it uh, if there are any questions on any question that i've actually uh, tried to do please let me know don't forget to subscribe and like and as you prepare for the exam, I hope that you found this very useful. I'll be coming back with question or paper two. All right. But for now, I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.